Welcome to exercise number 7.1. In this exercise, we are given with an extract from a select life table with four year select period. A select individual aged 41 purchased a three year term insurance with a sum insured of $200,000. A premium for that insurance are paid annually throughout the term. We assume that there are no expenses and the interest rate is 6% per year. In the first part of this exercise, we need to verify the premium value for the term insurance P. Using the equivalence principle, the premium P should be set such that the expected present value of benefit outgo should equal to the expected present value of net premium income. The benefit outgo in this exercise is an insured sum paid by insurance company to a policyholder in the case of death of a policyholder and therefore the expected present value of this benefit outgo can be modeled using the actuarial notations as an insured sum S times the actuarial value of a ter three year term insurance. Where here I assume that S is 200. The premium income can be modeled by the corresponding three-year term annuity, therefore its expected present value is equal to P times the actuarial value of this three-year term annuity due. The corresponding expected present value of term insurance and term annuity can be obtained from the given select life table. At this stage you should all be able to find these values yourself from the given select life table. Uh, therefore, without further explanation, let me just show you some intermediate steps how you can obtain these values. After having obtained these expected present values, we can insert them into our equation and verify that indeed the premium is equal to around 323.59. In the second part of this exercise, we need to calculate the mean and standard deviation of the present value of future random variable L1, so at the time L1, for this term insurance. For a better understanding, let me draw a timeline.
Of course, it is feasible to consider the future net loss function L1 at time 1 only if the policyholder has survived this one year. If so, then the value of random variable L1 is still life contingent. That is, it depends whether the policyholder survives the remaining term period or dies in the second or third year. Therefore, we could write down the present value of random variable L1 considering three possible scenarios. So if policyholder dies somewhere between time 1 and time 2, then the benefits will be paid out at time 2 by insurance company, but the policyholder will still have to pay the premium at the beginning of that period, that is at time 1. Note that we discount all cash flows now at time 1, not at time 0. And this scenario happens with probability that the policyholder dies in this time period from 1 to 2, that is with probability Q41 plus 1. Now if policyholder dies in a period between time 2 and time 3, then the benefits will be paid out at time 3, that is S V squared, but the policyholder we have has to pay the premium twice at time one and time two. And the probability of that event is a deferred probability uh, with deferral period of one year, that is uh, policyholder will have to survive one year and then the probability that he dies from time two to three. And the last possible scenario is that policyholder uh, survive the term of this insurance, so if he dies somewhere after the term expires, then no benefits will be paid out, but the policyholder would have paid two premiums, so it's going to be, so the loss will be minus gain P plus PV. And of course the probability of that event equal to probability of survival for these two periods. Because we know the insured sum as we know the annual premium P, uh, we know the possible outcomes of this random variable L1, and we can also obtain the probabilities of each of these outcomes using the extract from a life table. So knowing the possible outcomes of the random variable and its probabilities, we can obtain that the expected value of this random variable L1 is equal to 116.68. And we could also obtain the second moment of this random variable by squaring the possible outcomes. That is... from which you can obtain the variance and hence the standard deviation of the future loss random variable L1. In part C, now we consider a three-year endowment insurance instead of a term insurance for a select left also aged 41, and we ask to find the sum insured for this endowment insurance if the premium for is the same as for the term insurance. To find the sum insured that I denote as with super index E, we could also use the equivalence principle as in A and set the, that is we set equal expected present value of benefit out goal to expected present value of net premium income. The expected present value of benefit on goals in this case is SE times the expected present value of uh, endowment insurance instead of a term insurance 
and the expected present value of uh, net premium income stays the same that is it's p times uh, term annuity due recall that an endowment insurance is a sum of the corresponding term insurance and pure endowment therefore the expected present value of endowment insurance can be written as a sum of term insurance Uh, plus a expected present value of pure endowment. Uh, in part A, we have found the expected present value for the term insurance, and we can also find the actuarial discount factor because it's equal v to the power three times probability of survival for three years and using the expected present value for annuity due from from a uh, we can obtain that the sum insured for the endowment insurance is equal a thousand and ninety one twenty six in part D, we also now have to calculate the mean and standard deviation of the future loss running variable L1, but now for the endowment insurance. Let us recall that in part B, we have obtained a future loss running variable L1, considering three possible scenarios for the term insurance. And of course, we can use a similar approach for endowment insurance. So what is changing now for the future loss random variable of the endowment insurance L1 is of course the insured sum SE for the endowment insurance, but if policyholder dies in one in the first or second year, then the formulas for the corresponding output stay the same because this is still under the term period. But if policyholder survives the term, then under the uh, endowment insurance policy the insurance company have to pay the benefits at time three so we have to adjust the output in the third case by adding the benefit paid out at time three but then we know that the output in the second and the third cases are actually the same therefore in terms of the losses it doesn't really matter whether the policyholder dies between time two and three or survive survives the remaining term so we can merge these two outcomes by removing the third one and adjusting the probability in the second one by summing these two probabilities which would give us the survival probability for one year for a large 42. after we plug in all the values for these terms and probabilities we can calculate the mean and the standard deviation for the present value of future loss random variable L1 for the endowment insurance. In part E, we have to comment on the differences between the values for the term insurance and the endowment insurance. Let us recall the expected present value for the and standard deviation for the term insurance. We see that the expected present value of future losses at time one is almost three times larger for the endowment insurance than for the term insurance, which means that for the insurer to be in a financially sound position at time one, it should hold a large amount of money for the endowment insurance than for the term insurance. The difference between the standard deviations is much more substantial. 
And this is because the future cash flows for the term insurance are much more uncertain than those for the endowment insurance. We can see this from our formulas for the distribution of future loss random variable L1 for these two types of insurances. And also from the fact that under the endowment insurance, the benefits will be paid out eventually anyway. And the only uncertainty there is the timing of those payments while under the term insurance policy the benefits will be will not be paid out if the policyholder survives the term